Hello everyone, welcome to another series of Mind Map. In this series, we will discuss about the basics of macroeconomics. Under this topic, we will discuss about microeconomics versus macroeconomics, emergence of macroeconomics, some basic concepts, few definitions of production process and circular flow of the income. First of all, let's compare microeconomics versus macroeconomics. Traditionally, the subject matter of economics has been studied under two broad branches, microeconomics and macroeconomics. In microeconomics, we study the behavior of individual economic agents in the markets for different goods and services. It tries to figure out how prices and quantities of goods and services are determined through the interaction of individuals in these markets. While in macroeconomics, we try to get an understanding of the economy as a whole by focusing our attention on aggregate measures such as total output, employment and aggregate price level. We try to understand how the level of these aggregate measures change over time. Like, what is the level of total output in the economy? How is the total output determined? How does the total output grow over time? Are the resources of the economy, example labor, fully employed? And why do prices rise? Thus, we try to study the behavior of aggregate or macro measures. Now, let's discuss about emergence of macroeconomics. It emerged after the British economist John Maynard Keynes published his celebrated book, the General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money in 1936. Before this, the thinking was that all the resources are fully utilized. That is, all laborers are getting work, all factories working at full capacity. The Great Depression of 1929 led to huge fall in output and employment levels in the countries of Europe and North America. Demand for goods in the market was low. Many countries were lying idle and the workers were thrown out of the jobs. These events made economists think about the functioning of the economy in a new way. The fact that the economy may have a long-lasting unemployment had to be theorized about and explained. Now moving on to some basic concepts. What generates the economic wealth of a nation? What makes countries rich or poor? There are some of the central questions of economics. The economic wealth or well-being of a country does not necessarily depend on the mere possession of resources. Example, the resource-rich Africa and Latin America has some of the poorest countries in the world. The point is how these resources are used in generating a flow of production. As a consequence, income and wealth are generated from that process. Now let's have a look at some definitions of production process. First is intermediate goods. When good or service is used in further production, it is called intermediate good. Final goods. Such an item that is meant for final use and will not pass through any more stages of production or transformations is called a final good. Consumption good. Goods like food and clothing and services like recreation that are consumed when purchased are called consumption goods. Capital goods. These are other goods that are of durable character which are used in the production process. Example tools, machines. Consumer durables. These are consumer goods but they also need to be preserved, maintained and renewed. That is why they are called consumer durables. Example, bike, mobile, etc. Stocks. When a variable is measured at a specific point of time, it is known as a stock. Example, number of shirts in the warehouse at specific time. Flows. It is measured over a period of time. Example, the shirt production over a year or say two years. And depreciation. It is an annual allowance for wear and tear of a capital good. In other words, it is the cost of the good divided by number of years of its useful life. Now lastly, let's discuss about circular flow of the income. 
there may be fundamentally four kinds of contributions that can be made during the production of goods and services contribution made by human labor remuneration for which is called wage contribution made by capital remuneration for which is called interest contribution made by entrepreneurship remuneration for which is called profit and contribution made by fixed natural resources such as land remuneration for which is called rent considering a simple economy where only firms and households are there the income flows as household spends on the goods and services provided by the firms and factor services land include land labor capital and entrepreneurship factor payments include rent wages interest and profit respectively now moving on to the practice questions first of all prelims question which of the following are correctly matched with respect to factors of production and their remuneration 1 labor wage 2 capital profit 3 land rent 4 entrepreneurship interest select the correct code 1 and 2 only 2 and 4 only 1 and 3 only or all are correct you can send the answer of this question in the comment section now moving on to the mains question why should the aggregate final expenditure of an economy be equal to the aggregate factor payments explain with the flow of income in an economy so that's all for today stay tuned for the next episode and don't forget to watch our earlier video on gdp and national income thanks for watching